Hey guys, Mike from Magnanimous here, and we're back live from Studio One for another build of the day. In case you guys are new, this is a series that we started doing a few weeks ago and we've moved to doing every Tuesday where we will be going live at 5 p.m. highlighting a different camera build. Today's build is one that I think is extremely important for people, especially in today's current environment, and that's self-recording. It's something that I've seen a big uptake in, in terms of requests. So I wanted to show you guys a few different ways that you could accomplish a single operator uh, self-recording where you have the camera pointing directly at you and you're recording yourself uh, either for live streaming purposes, if you need to, you could easily take what we're building today and utilize the build that we had done uh, last week or the week before that and uh, stream with these setups. But if you don't want to stream, you can just record direct to camera. If you have a actor or subject, we actually can ship these packages directly to them and they can set all this up, use this video as a guide and record themselves for that direct to camera look. I wanted to highlight three different packages today, kind of ranging in complexity, because I know that there are a lot of different skill levels out there. So I want to show you guys first a setup that's going to be very, very simple that uses your phone and can scale that out to be a more professional recording device. And then we'll scale up using a very, very basic entry level DSLR. We're going to be using the Canon 80D today to do that direct to camera look. Uh, and then we'll go kind of big guns, 4K option, we'll use the Canon XF705, and we've got a few other accessories that we're going to be pairing with it to show how you can kind of scale up a direct camera build like this for self-recording. So let's go ahead and start taking a look at the cell phone setup that we have. I like this setup because it's extremely lightweight and packs really well into a small bag. Uh, I'm going to be using my cell phone today. You could feasibly use any cellular device that you have. Doesn't have to be an Android. Uh, for uh, iPhone users, you will need to pick up uh, the little dongle here, which converts your iPhone port to the 1/8 input for a mic input, because we are going to be using this little handy mic right here. And this is called the Rode Wireless Go Mic and it is an extremely simple, easy to use wireless lavalier setup. If you guys have watched our streams on Instagram, we've actually been using this mic for most of our streams to record better quality audio on a cell phone. It uses this small 1 8 to 1 8 cable here, although this cable is very, very special. It's what's called a TRS to TRRS adapter cable. You'll notice that the plugs here, one end has two black lines and the other end has three black lines. The gray end with the three black lines is what's going to go into our cell phone and that extra line is what's actually going to transfer the mic input into our phone. It's very simple to hook up to your phone. It's very plug and go. Once you've booted everything up, you just hook it into your uh, headphone jack and you'll be set to go. We could attach this onto a tripod, but to keep things lightweight and easy, I wanted to just go to a single uh, lightweight stand. So I have an impact branded light stand here. I'm going to expand out my base and we can set that down. The impact stands are great because they have a threaded quarter 20 mount on the top which is how we'll be rigging our cell phone. We have this small little cell phone mount here. It's very, very useful in that you can tilt it to set the exact uh, angle that you want. And then it can run a cellular device in a horizontal orientation or in a vertical orientation. So if you're doing a uh, video for Instagram or something like that, you want to shoot vertical, you can, or horizontal to finish for anything else. So we're just going to go ahead and tighten this down right to the top of our stand. And one thing you'll notice kind of right away is we don't have a fluid head on here. So for pan adjustments, I use the first level of my stand here because I can loosen the uh, thumb knob here and I can turn that level of the stand to essentially do those pan movements. It's not going to be the most stable thing, but for a direct-to-camera stationary build, very, very easy. If you're wanting to scale up to do some actual pan and tilt movements, just get a fluid head and you can attach this directly to the camera plate, just like you would a DSLR. We'll go ahead and throw my cell phone on here. 
So I'm going to run in a horizontal build because I'm going to be shooting 1080 video to be able to finish you know, for any place on the web or wherever I want to send this. So I want to have that in a nice horizontal 16 by 9 aspect ratio. I'm going to go ahead and hook in the gray side of the Rode VideoMic Go's uh, cable. And then you can tell the transmitter and receiver apart with these because the receiver will have the small LCD display. So if I boot both of these guys up, you'll notice this guy has the little display. So he'll be what I plug in over here. And we'll just run this into the side. It has a little clip on the back, which can be used to mount to a cold shoe or can clip onto the cell phone or something like that. Uh, you can do it in a variety of different ways. I've clipped it like this, but it can sometimes come loose. So I usually like to just wrap the cable around the knob here, and I'll clip it into the cable like so. And it'll just hang itself right there for me. There's a small button on the bottom, which has a DB listed. That's how you adjust the level. And there's uh, three modes that you can switch between. And you'll see the level uh, gauge kind of decrease or fill up as you change that volume. I prefer running it on the lowest setting, but you can adjust it based on your specific needs. The nice thing with the Wireless Go is your transmitter pack is just this small little cube here has an integrated mono mic right here on the top, as well as a 1 8 input. So if you don't want to have to run a mic into it, you can just use this as your mic. You can use it as a handheld mic if you just wanted to talk into it like this and you know have your phone looking at you and you could talk directly to it. Or you can treat it like a lavalier mic and either tuck it you know into a shirt like that or tape it underneath your shirt or something like that to pick up that audio. Or if you have a lavalier mic, you can run it into the 1 8 port, put this in your pocket, and it'll run up. The nice thing with the wireless Go mic is there's no need to sync the transmitter and the receiver. They pair automatically, and they automatically detect what channels are going to be best to run on. So you don't have to worry about uh, interference and things like that. It's going to automatically find the best channel for you to get the best audio for your recording. I then have this cheap little phone light that I'm going to be running just to help with exposure. And I'm just going to clip that onto the side of my phone there. And then from here, it would just be a matter of raising my phone up to eye level and then turning it around to face me. And let's level out a little bit there. And I would have my wireless Go mic here and be able to talk and record myself directly on my phone like so. Very, very simple, easy to set up. You just have to hook up a few things, and it's very plug and go. Your camera on your phone is going to automatically pick up this microphone going in. So you just tell your phone to record video, and it'll pick up that audio nice and cleanly. If that's something you guys are interested in, you can go into this with little to no experience with video production and still be able to capture very good quality direct-to-camera self-recording. Now, if you are looking to kind of scale up your game a little bit and you want a higher quality than what a cell phone is going to be able to offer you, you will need to first invest in a tripod. I like our Sattler Ace tripod here because it finds the nice balance of small portability while still giving us a good amount of stability in the head and good tension control for smooth panning and tilt movements. Very, very useful. It's one of my favorite budget-friendly tripods. And then, as I had mentioned, we're going to be using the Canon 80D here. I love the Canon 80D because it has two main features that make it one of the simplest, easiest to use DSLRs out there. First of all, is a rotating screen so that I can flip this around and when I have my camera in front of me, I'll be able to see myself on the screen to know what's in focus, make sure my framing's good, and be able to know that everything's good to go. The other thing is that this touch screen, or this screen is a touch screen. So I can utilize Canon's dual pixel autofocus and just touch where I want to focus on the screen and it's going to automatically pull focus directly to that point. Or, like we're doing today, we can set up face detect autofocus so that anytime my face is in frame, it's going to automatically pull focus to that. Even if it's moving around the frame, the face detect will be able to track with me to ensure that my face stays in focus the whole time. 
I first pop the battery into the bottom, which is just a single LPE6. You'll typically have about two hours of record time on one battery. And you do want to know that DSLRs, like the ADD, have a recording limit of 29 minutes and 59 seconds, at which point you will then have to hit record again and start recording uh, another time. If you're looking for longer form recording, the XF705 setup that we'll be covering next is probably the best setup for you. Or just think of uh, truncating the video into uh, 29 minute chunks that you can then cut between so that you can work around that recording limit. Uh, that's just something you'll find in all DSLRs. Uh, it's just the nature of the kind of lower end cameras and uh, just something that you'll have to be aware of to work around. Then for lensing, you'll notice that the ADD does not come with a lens. I have the Canon 16 to 35, which is a awesome zoom lens, which has been a staple for years. This is the version two, which I like because it's a more budget friendly version of it. We have version two and version three, but our version two is always a little bit cheaper because it's not the newest version. So I like it so you can save a bit of money. It won't have the fastest autofocus, but with our ADD and our touchscreen, it's as reliable as we need for a simple direct to camera setup. And it has the best focal length for direct to camera because we have a wide option at 16, but we can zoom to a 35 if we want to get a slightly tighter field of view to have a better close up or get some detail shots. I find much wider than 35 can be very challenging for detail shots just because it's such a wide field of view. So having the option to go to 35 is very, very useful, uh, especially when paired with the ADD. So we'll go ahead and attach our lens. For those of you who haven't worked with DSLRs before, I just want to show you guys how I attach this lens. It's something that I think a lot of uh, cinematographers and photographers take for granted. We get so used to working with these cameras that we don't think about how it's like to be a novice again. So when you take off the cap here, you'll notice two colored icons. There's a white square and a red circle. The red circle is for full frame lenses to attach, which this is a full frame lens. You'll know because it also has a red circle on it. So when we remove this, you're going to see a series of gold contacts here at the bottom and those gold contacts at the bottom of our lens mount there. We want those to connect. So we're going to line up the red circle here with the red circle on our mount. Make sure everything sits nice and flush, and I'll turn to the side so you guys can see that on our close-up. I'm gonna, that would be not flush, so you wanna make sure everything's nice and flush, there's no gaps there, and then we'll just do a small quarter turn, and you'll hear a click as it locks in place. And that's how you know your lens is nice and mounted on there. And then, of course, audio is very important. If you haven't worked with DSLRs before, DSLR mics are not very reliable for critical audio. It's a monaural mic, meaning it's going to have just a general pickup of all audio that's around the camera with no particular direction to how it's doing that pickup. So for something like a uh, direct self-recording like this, we'll want something a little bit more directional. I'm using the Rode uh, VideoMic Pro here, but you could use any shotgun mic that is able to power itself with a battery because our camera here is not going to output that power. So I'm going to start by just pushing up on our little battery door here to open that up and pop one of our 9 volt batteries in. We don't include expendable batteries in our rental, so if you're renting this kit, just make sure you pick up a 9 volt beforehand. And then we'll just pop our battery door right back in place with just that little tension lock. It just pops right in there. And I'm going to mount this to our cold shoe right on top. On the left side of our camera here, we'll have all of our main connections. And this cover here has mic and headphones. So I'll open that up. And our microphone goes into the mic port. And if you had a pair of headphones, you'd want to run those in to check your levels. And we can just flip it on right there. And now I can very easily set this to the side. And I can step out to have that direct to camera look for it. And then that mic is going to have a much more directional pickup to pick up my audio as I'm talking to it. 
And uh, I'll turn so, here, we'll do it this way. I'm going to flip my screen so you guys can see it on the close up. But you'll notice as soon as I stand in front, a little box forms around my face. That's our face detect autofocus. So no matter where I move within my frame, it's going to track with me to keep me in focus. Makes it so that you, as the operator, don't have to think about focus. Because when you're working by yourself for a direct camera self recording, you want to try and keep things as simple as you can. You're going to be directing it as well as being the talent on screen. So you want to have to think about all the bits and pieces and setting up the camera as least as you can so you can focus on the creative side. This will find the nice blend of professional level control while still giving you a lot of hand holding so that you don't have to worry about focus. And if we want to, I can switch my dial over to program auto and it's going to take care of exposure for me as well. It's all dependent on where your skill level is at at a shooter. But the nice thing with the ADD is that it can cater to a lot of different skill levels so that if you're new, you can run it on auto. But if you're looking for a utmost control, switch it to manual and you can take care of everything yourself and make sure everything goes exactly the way you want it to. Very, very useful build. And for those of you who aren't used to big cameras and want to start working with more professional gear, this is going to be a great spot to start. Then let's take a look at how we would build this out for our XF705 setup. Because there's a few accessories I think that can make this setup a lot more uh, user friendly. Not that the other setups aren't great, but they can be a little limited if you want to scale them up. Namely 4K recording, the XF705 here packs a massive punch in terms of recording. It uses a new HEVC codec to record H.265, which compresses video more to give you access to higher uh, recording options with lower data rates. The HEVC codec will be capable of 4K 60 recording in 10-bit, so you have a massive amount of color information as well as resolution to work with if you need to, or it can do good quality 1080 as well. All depends on what you need has an integrated 10 times, I'm sorry, 15 times servo zoom lens, and the XS705 has the option to be controlled with this little remote here. So I can put it up on my tripod, I can rig it out with all of my accessories, and I can zoom my lens, start recording, and do menu adjustment, all from this small little uh, remote right here, which means I don't have to get up to go change things on my camera which, like we had just talked about when you're doing self-recording, anything you can do to make your life easier and streamline the process of shooting is going to mean less hassle and less things that you alone have to deal with. So being able to stay seated in frame and adjust camera settings will be very, very useful and just help move through a shoot much faster. Let's go ahead and throw our tripod plate on. I have switched our tripods. If you notice, this is the Manfrotto 504. Also a good budget-friendly tripod, but it's a little bit beefier to give us just a little bit more tension control. And for a beefier setup like what I'm doing here, rigging out a couple accessories and things like that, it'll just help us be a lot more stable. So we'll throw our XF705 up on our tripod here. And go ahead and lock them down. Now, the first accessory that I want to add is a monitor because the flip out LCD screen here has uh, two major flaws. First off, it's just not large, it doesn't have a high resolution, and it's just small. So, for a quick reference and trying to match critical focus, things like that, it's just not as ideal. The second thing is if I flip it like this so that I could look directly at my monitor when I look at the camera and I hit the mirror button to flip my display so that I can see it, it gets rid of the uh, information display and it becomes just a image display. So I can't see things like record settings, battery life, and things like that. So I'm instead going to output 
to this small HD 702 monitor and I'm going to purposely set my SDI output to send out my menu so that this monitor will have all of my settings, everything will be listed, and I can do all my major monitoring from this. And it'll also act as a really nice reference monitor for me to set frame and everything like that. One of the things that we have to keep in mind, though, is this little dot right up here, this little black line, is the sensor for our remote. So normally, I would want my monitor to be as directly in front of my camera as possible so that when I'm looking at my reference monitor, my eyes still are fairly direct to the camera so it doesn't look weird like I'm looking off screen. But we can't put it directly in front like this because we would block that sensor and not be able to use our remote. So instead, I'm going to use an arm and I'm going to arm it just off to the side, right like that. That'll give us still an easy monitor to view from that's directly above our lens and it'll leave our sensor open so that we have control. To do that, I'm going to attach to this cold shoe here. Now, one of the things you'll notice on the top here is that our XF705 can be a little limited for accessories. It's got one cold shoe and one quarter 20 mount here in the back. But if I need two cold shoes or two quarter 20 mounts, I don't really have an option. So we're going to do an old trick where we're going to take this cold shoe and convert it to a quarter 20 mount, which uses this cold shoe mounting piece right here and what's called a quarter 20 female adapter. I'll thread it onto one end, and you'll notice that after I've threaded about halfway through, I countersink my washer, and then I can mount this directly to my cold shoe. And now I've created a second quarter 20 mount that I can use to arm my monitor off of. So we'll go ahead and do that now. I'll take my articulating arm and thread him down and countersink my washer. And then just have to think about where we're going to mount our arm on our monitor. We could mount to the back but it probably is going to limit exactly how we can position this a little bit. So I'm going to purposely mount to my side, which will allow me to get my monitor right about there. And we'll bring him down. And I think somewhere right about there will be perfect. That's just outside of what the camera's frame will be able to see, so it's not going to interfere the shot that we get while still being a really nice display just to the side that we can make out very easily. Two LPE6 batteries mount onto the back for power, each one giving us about two hours of runtime, so we have a decent amount of battery life here. And then just a single SDI out of the back of the camera to run my signal. And then I'll go ahead and turn this on so you guys can see what the menu looks like as I'm putting the rest of this together so that you can see why I wanted to put the monitor like so. Throw a battery in camera there. So you'll see right away that I have my battery readout, my white balance, all of my major settings are all listed. And then if I need to make any setting changes, I can hit my menu button and it'll pull up my menu and I can do all of my menu control right here from the remote. Very, very useful, and that'll be how we can still monitor everything when we have our camera facing directly to us. It is important to note that the remote does not have control for your aperture or exposure settings, uh, such as your gain or shutter speed, things like that. So you will want to take a moment to set your exposure before you go in front of camera and start setting up everything, but in terms of 
uh, focal length, you can still zoom the lens from the remote here so that we can set the frame that we want even without having to come around to the back of the camera. The next accessory we're going to do is audio because audio is always really, really important. The nice thing with the XF705 is that we gain two XLR inputs for audio, which means we can have two different sources. First source will be this Sennheiser MKE600 shotgun mic. Very, very useful directional audio. It's very much like the Rode VideoMic Pro we looked at, but a much higher end, more sensitive mic that's going to give us a very, very nice directional pickup. So I can go ahead and pop this into our shock mount up here. And our first XLR input is right here. So we're just going to run a 3-pin from our mic down into the XLR input. And then I've gone ahead and set phantom power, which is mic plus 48V because this mic does not have a battery in it, so I want to send it power through the XLR, which is that plus 48V. It's called phantom power. The second source that I'm going to add in is going to be a wireless lav mic, which I have a Sennheiser G3 kit here. This is the receiver, and then the transmitter pack would mount to a subject. We're actually using one of those today, so you guys can see what that's like on my back here. So I'm running that lav mic to the wireless lapel that's right up here on my shirt. So we would do something very similar with this. And this would typically mount to a shoe mount. As we've already said, we've kind of ran out of shoe mounts. So a trick you can use, since this is on tripod, I'm going to take the belt clip right here, and I'm going to hook it into the camera's hand grip right here so that it clips my mic pack right to the side of my camera, like so. And it's going to keep it nice and steady, safe. My antenna is pointing up, so I'll maintain a good signal. And then I'll run the XLR from the output here into the second input that we have on the back of camera here. And then light is always important. A camera's exposure can only do so much, and when you're shooting in a variety of different situations, lighting can be challenging. So to handle our lighting, we have a small box LED light to go on top of camera. This particular model is called the Z180, and it's great because it's bicolor, meaning I can dial in the color temperature. So if I put a battery in here, I have two dials on the back. One is for my power output. It'll clip on, and then I can control exactly how bright the light is by dimming it down. And then the other dial here is for my color temperature. So I can turn it from daylight, which is 5600 Kelvin, to tungsten, which is 3200 Kelvin. So you'll notice this is a lot warmer. And if I switch it, that would be a lot cooler. And it all depends on what other lighting you're using in the scene to match so that you're uh, setting the proper white balance. And I'm going to mount this on a Noga arm off of the back mounting point here. I'm just going to go ahead and thread this down. And I like mounting it with a Noga arm because it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of how the light is mounted and exactly how the throw of the light is going. I don't think a light directly on the front of camera, just above the lens, pumping light at a subject is always the best look. There's usually a way to be a little bit more creative. So I like the arm because we can still have everything mounted to one single tripod. But with this, we can be a little bit more creative. I can bring my light over to the side and do something like this, or I can move it to the other side and play around with its position a little bit to make it look the most appealing on screen. So for this, I think we'll do a little bit of an eye light just to the side here, but I'm going to cut it at a little bit of an angle 
so that our light is about a 45, something about like that. Let's get a little bit farther forward. There we go. And we'll lock that down in place. And we're running daylight, so I'll match it with some daylight here. And I like this soft diffusion panel in the front. It is optional, but it just softens the light out so it has a little bit nicer throw on it. And I'm just going to do a little bit of an accent there. And I can turn this to face me. We'll need to tilt up just a little bit. And with that, I can have a direct-to-camera video for self-recording. And I see myself on my display right here. And then I hope our back camera can see. If I don't like my frame, you know, I have a little bit of the silk in the back there. So I'm just going to zoom in. And yeah, that's a little bit better. My head's a little cut off, so we could play with the frame a little bit. I could step back. But I can set my frame with my remote, so I don't have to actually go up to camera and start make adjustments. And when I'm ready to go ahead and start recording, I just hit it on my remote. And we're good. And I don't have to leave my spot. I've already set my frame. I don't want to have to leave. So now I can do everything right from my remote. Makes it very, very quick and easy, and makes it just less hassle for you to change your camera settings. Let's go ahead and pull all three of these back out so we can see them all side by side. And I'm going to dim this guy down just a little bit there. All right, so let's go just kind of recap the different setups that we did. I know we kind of took our time going through. This one here would be for your beginner who's never worked with a camera before and is just looking for very, very simple self-recording option on their cell phone. The Rode Wireless Go mic will make setting up audio a breeze. Just plug it into your phone and you'll be good to go. And then uh, the little LED ring light here is just going to help us give a little bit of extra light there. And this would be a very, very simple, quick, easy to work with setup. For those of you looking for a little bit more, we have our Canon 80D here, 16 to 35 lens. So we have a lot of control over the field of view, but we maintain a lot of focus control with it because it's a nice, fast f2.8 aperture. And then with our flip out screen here, we know we're still going to be able to see ourselves and we can touch it to do our focus, which makes it very, very simple and easy. And then for those of you who are needing the big guns, we have the Canon XF705 here. I rigged it out with an LED light, extra audio solutions, as well as a reference monitor for setting up frame and everything. So this could be an entirely all-in-one 4K 60p recording uh, for that self-recording that you want to have the utmost quality with. Uh, various different levels of production. I know there may be a lot of different questions about the various builds. Let's check and see what you guys had. All right, well, if you guys have questions about these setups and how to do them yourself, comment below and let us know. If there's things that you want to see in future builds, let me know. I want to highlight the gear that you guys are interested in. So let me know what you want to see, and we can highlight those in future weeks. Today's is a really important build. For any of you who are at home and need gear, we can ship any of the setups that I've shown you directly to your door so that you have everything you need. You can use the setup that we just did as a guide to put it all together and start recording. So you can have self-recording very, very simple and easy and safe even in today's environment. So I encourage you guys, check out our website where you can see all of the gear that we talked about today. If you have questions, give us a call or visit magrents.com, and I'll plan to see you guys next week on Tuesday.